Well, hello, friends. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to do a little demo. Here is my um, table of gratitude. I've set up a still life. Got some of my favorite things. Um, I might not normally put lemons in there, but I, I had cooked a lot of the food yesterday for Thanksgiving. So um, we got a shallot and Anytime you can have objects inside, outside, in front, behind, and think about multiple layers, levels, okay? Now, a still life only need be one object, but there is an element of overlapping and space. So on a mat, uh, on under, behind. So I would suggest you um, gather about at least three objects. You can keep it simple with three objects, but no matter what, it's one at a time. We start in the front with the object we can see all of that is most near the center. I can see all of my shallot. It's low, it will be lower on my paper. The front is at the bottom. The far is at the top. So we're gonna be creating the illusion of space, of 3D space on a flat two-dimensional piece of paper. That is the, the trick, the illusion. If it's your first time drawing from observation, just take it one line at a time. These are the contour lines that wrap around the object, the contour of the um, connector, uh, the stem, the contour of the leaf. Notice the contour of this leaf is coming up in front, in front. Whoops, the, then it runs behind, then it disappears. The contour line starts and stops. It shows what is the outside edge. Sometimes the outside comes to the inside. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do first is find approximately the center of my still life. Now, I don't want to put the whole thing on there necessarily, or maybe you do, but I gave you uh, a pretty thick paper. You can use it for painting if you want to add later, but we're going to, we're going to talk about how to get these forms on your page so that they look proportionally correct and, um, somewhat realistic in terms of space. Okay. So I'm just going to talk you through it. Here's how I would go about, it. I tried to set up the camera where you can see what I see, although I'm over here. So all of a sudden we are, nobody sits in your space. Nobody stands in your shoes. So that is your very unique perspective. So my unique perspective is slightly to the side of yours, but you'll be able to follow what I'm doing. Also, uh, I like to draw very, very softly until I find the form and then I dig in. So here's, Here's what was happening earlier when I was just practicing. Um, so you'll see my original lines are very faint until I find the form. Also, my lines in front tend to become harder, a deeper value. That shows in front and behind would be softer. So here I would say this space is in front. This one is behind, so I can make this one a little darker. And that's another way to create space in front and behind with line quality. The thickness or thinness of a line creates an illusion as well. Series of forms are overlapped, and so we're just going to take them one at a time. As I said, I'm going to try to find the center so I'm looking to point my pencil. I have one eye closed. Um, the center of my still life is approximately somewhere right in here. Um, 
I don't need the whole basket. I'm really just working with this. I put that back there for a background. Working with this main area. I don't need to draw this point. There's no purpose for that because that's a bunch of wasted space on my page if I draw this point. So the most important part is happening right here. Approximate center somewhere here um, if I'm looking at all of my objects. So if I find the center of my paper, I'm going to be able to lay that. I'm just going to lay this curve down right there. And like I said, I draw very softly at first. So let me do it harder so you guys can see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so I just laid that in for reference. All right. Um, in or now the size and the scale of things, well, it'll just happen until you run out of paper. Um, or start with a little practice. So we're going to block in. Okay. What happens right up here next to the edge of my, uh, ellipse, my elliptical top, which I could, I could lay in, but I can't see the whole thing. So I'm not going to draw the whole thing necessarily right now. Um, I see the whole pomegranate. So how do I see it near relation in relation to this curve? Pro uh, pro pro excuse me, proportion <laughs> pa, 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 is how one shape idea relates to something else in scale. So I'm going to relate my pomegranate to this. How high is it compared to the top of my bowl? It's not. The highest part of my pomegranate comes to about right here. And I'm looking at the negative, it's creating a negative space in here. I'm looking at the curve. I'm gonna draw harder so you guys can see what I'm doing. And it's a basic circle, right? So let me just get my basic circle in there first. I can change it up later. I see this stem where it was cut approximately here on this form. And I also see interesting undulating contour um, there as well where it's not really round. And I can do details later. I've blocked in my pomegranate. Okay? Blocked it in. Because it's in front. And now another thing I would suggest is never to let your still life objects go off the page. Now, if I had drawn my pomegranate like this, going off the bottom of the page, this edge, we want to completely ignore this edge. You don't want to even know that it's there. Well, now we know it's there because it's so rough and abrupt. It's clearly very different and in contrast to the organic nature of the pomegranate. So, and the, we're, we're working with organic shapes and forms right now. And this just deletes my illusion, this edge. It's like, eh, no, there's no illusion of 3D form there. So I suggest lifting your first objects up off the bottom of the page, okay? All right, that way they're gonna look 3D. They'll look more round. Now my leaf's coming out over here. Where's it coming from? I see it coming from right here. And again, like we practiced with the axis of symmetry, I'm gonna follow this axis out. Where's it going? Over here, off the page. What do I see this edge, bottom edge doing? There's a curve going to continue off the vein there. And now I'm just looking at everything related to this axis of symmetry. Everything on the leaf right now, I'm relating to that. Well, here's this point that's coming up. Ignore the edge of your paper. Okay, I see one coming in. Working with the contour. Okay, and I'm basically moving on, okay? Because now I can see what's behind this. My pumpkin. 
So where's this little pumpkin coming from? So see, it's just one shape at a time. Where's it coming from? Oh, I see it starts about right here on the pomegranate. You see that line disappears right here. Okay, and where, how high does it go? Ooh, hmm, how high does it go related to my pomegranate? Well, it goes about half a pomegranate up. So everything's related to each other. So I'm going about half a pomegranate up, finding that curve. Where does the stem go? How far does this go off the page? Well, let's see. I can't really see it behind the leaf there much. I think it's going to run off the page, but I know that the stem is directly above this part of my leaf right here. I'm just going to work straight up from that. And I'm going to lay in a little curve. Whatever I see, it's draw what you see, right? See the front contour of that stem, gnarly stem. Then all the details later. I'm just blocking in. I'm just, now I know this back edge comes around and I have a basic shape blocked in behind the pomegranate. So here's my harder front edge. I see a contour coming in there. Okay, I have in front, behind. Okay, what's next? Moving on one at a time, right? Am I dealing with all these details right now? No way. Details are last, okay? I don't need to fixate on any of these details until I have laid out my composition and I, I'm pleased with it. And I think it's a strong composition. Composition is how your shapes... Uh, are, are arranged on the page, how your lines and shapes are arranged related to this rectangle. That is your composition. So here I was working with earlier, I would sh I'll show you a very weak composition and it's not about how you draw the objects. It's about how they're placed on the page. Okay. Let's say that I draw all of my objects doing a very rough, super rough sketch. Okay. Here are my objects on my page. Let's just ignore that example. It's not a strong composition. It, there's a lot of dead space, a lot of negative space. We call that dead space if there's a lot, if it's dead. Uh, so even though I can have my other mat, my orange mat coming here, my other lacy piece here, my basket. Well, now it's starting to fill out, isn't it? Okay, better. But for me, the still life is not about the lacy mat or the orange mat. It's about these objects. So personally, I tend to zoom in and what we call blow it up our, our composition so that I'm actually just exploding off the page with my objects. I'm going to keep rolling. Okay. Um, it's time for me to lay in the rest of the bowl, but there's something in front of it. So I need to be aware of that. I can see this whole edge. How far down does it go? It is above the bottom of the pomegranate. So I, all these edges are curved, by the way. Okay, so I'll do some erasing later. I've got my bottom edge, but there's something in front of it. And it's this shallot form. How big is it? Well, it's about as big as a lemon sort of smaller than a lemon. So um, I could just go ahead and put my lemon in there. Or I could say that this is one third of the pomegranate. I could say that because I know how big the pomegranate is. That's how we create proportion, correct proportions, is by 
relating the scale at, into fractions of what is existing. So here, let me just lay in my football shaped shallot. I love shallots. Okay, so there I've, I've laid it in down here. Um, and now I can finish my bowl. How wide is the bowl? It's wider than my pomegranate. It's an ellipse, so it's a symmetrical form. It's, its axis of symmetry is here horizontally, so I try to keep that in mind. You don't need to, I, I really don't need to draw this, but that's what I'm thinking is that there is the same above as below and the same curve on both edges, even though my handmade bowl is not perfect. Okay, now I can put my lemon in and, I, and I'm aware. That's why you draw softly is because my lemon is overlapping the, the bowl. So I'm gonna be getting rid of what's behind. I can't see that edge of the bowl. But let me lay in my lemon. It's approximately less than half the size of the bowl. There's a little bit of the puckered up end right here. All right. Generally speaking, this is one lemon. The bowl comes in front. So I'm making that harder. I, I'm pressing harder. A darker value there. Rougher line quality. Okay, then we've got in front, behind, and then there's another lemon in there. And where's it coming from? Right about here. How big is it? I see, draw what you see, I see one-fourth the size of this lemon and this lemon, which comes from behind or under. And get rid of these lines that aren't important now so it doesn't confuse us. Um, using a white pearl eraser. They're good. They're, they work very well for erasing. Okay. Now I can finish the other side of my bowl. And here you're just trying to find the edge, the contour. Where does it go? Where does it come from? There is another contour like a layer here. Let me turn uh, uh, down my radio. Okay. All right. Let me keep rolling here. So, uh-oh. Did the camera... Did, are we okay? All right. Okay. Um, what do I need to do next? Well, now I've got my ding, ding, little... Handle. Where is it coming from? I see it coming from right here. How about the bottom edge? It's a curve. Where does that come from here? And how much do I see? Or the size? Verticals, curved bottom on this cylinder. The bottom of the curve matches the curve of the top of the cylinder. What kind of curve do you put in there? And then all my candle googlies. Okay, I'm going to possibly add a little stem in there, even though I can't see that. You can always add what you need if you want. But if you don't see it, it's not in your still life. But you're the artist, so you choose, right? Um, where do I see the bottom edge of this yummy glass, wonderful... Um, Piece. Now, I can use my pencil here to see where the stem of this, how it relates to the center of my candle. I can close one eye and, oh, I see now that this edge is at the center of my candle, that this edge comes straight down into the center of my candle, and that helps me find that edge. I know it's up here. 
Where does it start to curve? Uh, halfway down the lemon. Halfway down the lemon, it starts to curve. Okay, you've got an idea of working proportion, all right, where you're trying to figure out one thing at a time. How wide is this using proportion? What's the correct proportion here? Uh, well, I see that it's definitely less than the candle. So I already have the candle. So I'm going to make it less. <laughs> it's just uh, sometimes if it's a half or if it's a third or a quarter, you know, great. All right. So here's what I've got so far. I can now lay in what I see. Um, okay. How high does this puppy go? Let's see. It's about a lemon high. Approximately, just curved glass pieces, and all right, and then an ellipse at the top. So this is general. I see the spaghetti squash contour edge coming out there. It's not. I don't see much other than that, and the pump, the big pumpkin. I see a curve here that's running off the table. Where's the other edge of that? It is to the right of the stem on this little guy. How high does it go off the page? Um, about, you know, and you're looking, I'm thinking about less than, yeah, about a pomegranate high to the top from here. So that looks about good. And then all of these lovely, lovely contour lines that wrap around the pumpkin. So my stem's up here. So I'm going to have these. These are wrapping. I'll draw it darker so you can see it. Around. These are beautiful contour lines. If you take your fingers and you grab a big, juicy pumpkin, these are like the contour lines that wrap. They're going around. So that means these are going around this way and these are going around this way. And that helps their wrapping and ground. And seeing, finding the bottom of my pumpkin is approximately here. So I'm thinking that as I'm looking. At these curves. Okay. And I'll continue to work with details, add these ridges. I'll add some luscious texture details, maybe work with colored pencils. Um, okay. Let me, let me see. You notice the bottom of my, my composition. I'm, I'm happy with my arrangement. It's just blocked in. So I, now I can go and look at all the little details and work towards creating realism with each object all the way down to the little hairs in here. But one thing I missed so far, and I do it last, I do the under pinnings last. So what do I see? There's the lacy coming out. It's an oval, so I'm just blocking in a big curve for my lacy part. And there's another, okay, there it is. And then my orange piece, um, I'll just add these lines that allude to the edge. Oh, sorry, there's, let me put this on the back. Okay, there we go that allude to the out, you know, the bottom edge of my um, cloth. Okay. All right. G super general, but this is a good lesson. There are so many things to observe and draw and a still life can be overwhelming, but not when you start with one close object. Think about the middle bring it up off the bottom of the page. Think about the bottom of the edges, uh, the curved bottoms of all the objects as being um, in relation to each other. It helps to close one eye. 
It helps to squint and see relationships. Series of related edges and shapes. Thank you so much. Um, if you would like to continue on, paint this color, whatever. It's all you and the fun that you'll have doing that. If you want my help and if anybody wants to do online interactive um, lesson, uh, I do also private sessions. And if you know, if you want more information, okay. Um, enjoy your still life. Thank you for being a part of Unboxed. I really am grateful that you were a part of November Unboxed. And if you want to do December with us, let me know ASAP. I'm going to be building that program now. <laughs> Take care.